Hello, welcome to today's video. Um, I did a smoke firing yesterday and recorded the whole process as well as the opening of the kiln the next day and polishing. Um, so I start off here by wrapping uh, each pot in organic material and inorganic material like copper wire. So I usually just use salted corn husks because they can give some really nice oranges and reds and what have you. And I used a uh, bag of rotten banana peels because I thought I had dried them in the sun, but evidently they did not dry long enough. And I opened the bag to find something very disgusting. <laughs> there were like larva and shit like that in there. So I won't be doing that again. And that weird hand motion you just saw me doing was the visible disgust of what I had just touched. So needless to say, I probably won't be using banana peels that are rotten anymore. They also didn't leave very good impressions. They just kind of look like they stand out in a bad way. So that was just me being impatient, I guess. I need to uh, be more thorough and intentional in what I do. So um, there's a point, you can see this pot laying on its side and that's not good for rounded objects because they tend to roll. And you're gonna see a very cool ninja grab in a second here. Very proud of that. But um, yeah, here I'm just finishing up the wrapping. Um, and I think I end up putting copper wire in there. I'm pretty sure I do. And you have to lay it properly so that it actually burns onto the pot. If not, it'll just fall onto the floor of the kiln. Sometimes the corn husks do something. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes all the chemicals you throw in there do something. Sometimes they don't. That's just the beauty of the smoke firing. The fact that you can only control so much and you have to leave the rest up to chance. And the same can almost be said in a glaze firing. Sometimes you just screw up from unknown variables and uh, you just have to do what you can to improve. But that, there's the copper wire right there. And this is actually from um, a roll of like copper netting, I guess. And it's used to keep rodents out of um, holes in the foundation of your home so that they don't live there. But I repurposed that because copper wire can make really cool black streaks in um, a smoke firing. So, yeah. Really just waiting for it to roll over at this point because it was pretty cool when it did. I don't know why I'm so proud of that, but I am. There you go. Come on, that's kind of cool. So I'm just gonna let myself finish up this pot here and then we'll get to the actual firing or assembling of the fire. All right, now you can see this beautifully crafted oil drum that I cut the top off of so I could use it as a lid. Cut some slits in so it could fit a little bit better. And uh, cut some slits on the side to help with airflow, as well as I think 10 or 12 holes on the very bottom that I cover up to help with the reduction atmosphere. Science words. So uh, here I'm just laying down some sawdust on the uh, floor of the kiln, if you can call it a kiln. And uh, yeah, just getting it above those holes so that um, it kind of pulls the fire down to the base of the kiln. And I'm laying a ring of salt because the fumes of it can make like yellow and orange uh, smoke. So that's the first chemical that I'm laying down. And then I am just making sure that no salt is touching the pots because if it does pot, if it does touch the pot, it will coagulate and leave a really nasty um, black scar on it that you have to sand off. And sanding these pots just looks like crap. So I try to not do that if I can help it. This guy that I'm about to lay down, I'm making a nest for it right now, cracked straight down the horizontal axis and it is a travesty because I actually like this one. But it's just been sitting in my house for more than a year. The date label on the bottom says 2019, so it's been pretty damn long since I've touched it. So it's not too bad, I guess. I almost forgot about it until I decided to fire. I can make more, I got more clay. So I'm about to lay down some copper sulfate, which is found in miracle Grow. That's like the most common way to purchase copper sulfate. And um, 
it can leave some really nice reds and if it's in a reduction atmosphere it creates this effect that I call garbage because it looks like garbage where there's like teal blue red whatever all just clumped in one area and it doesn't look very good it's very uh prominent and the whole point of these is to make the colors and streaks subtle like they're natural and they blend in together but um here i'm just kind of laying it in random spots <clears throat> i'm trying to put less chemicals in than i normally do because the last firing the pots were almost entirely red from copper carbonate which is what i'm laying down right now um, this is the least volatile chemical that I add because even if it's touching a pot directly, it doesn't leave any scarring like the copper sulfate and salt do. But definitely leaves some really nice results when you get flashes of red in there. They're very subtle and I like the way they look. And that pink stuff is the most expensive chemical that I have, which is called cobalt carbonate, I believe. It's like, I want to say 50 bucks a pound. I could be wrong. Might be over exaggerating, but... This is a new chemical that I'm trying out. I think it's called nickel carbonate, something like that. Don't know the name, but I'm just experimenting here basically. And these are pistachio shells because organic, maybe they'll do something. I don't know, they didn't really do anything. Spoiler alert, alert. But it's just another thing to add to the fire, some kindling. And here I am gonna put some pine needles in because they go up in flames in a second. And <laughs> I pick out a cicada molt. I think it's a cicada molt because it scared the shit out of me. It just came out of nowhere. It's kind of cool though. And I just added them to the fire because why not? <laughs> so just trying to spread them throughout the crevices created by the pots so that it's like an even fire. <clears throat> and then I start chopping up these nasty beams from a, uh, a bed frame that still have nails and screws and stuff in them because it's free wood and I don't want to throw it away and waste it. So yeah, I only got punctured by a few nails. So overall, not bad. You can see the nasty nails in there right there. And right here I am soaking these pieces of cloth from a uh, old shirt that was ripped and didn't fit anyway. I'm just soaking those in lighter fluid, um, Zippo lighter fluid, because Zippo lighters are overrated and I got to use the lighter fluid for something. So soaking them in that, I'm going to plug them through the slits on the side of the barrel and they're going to touch the very bottom of the can so that it can light from the bottom up. Probably should have put them in before I put the kindling in because at this point I'm just kind of digging through a forest trying to get to the bottom of the kiln, but we made it work. This barrel is very crappy. Um, an oil drum can only take so many firings before the steel starts to wither away and crumble. And at the end of the firing, actually, when I was taking the pots out, I was seeing it crack and break. So I've definitely got to buy a new one. But here I'm just putting slightly larger pieces of wood in because, you know, you're basically just building a campfire from here. Very exciting. But I'm just trying to fill up as many holes as I can while keeping in mind that I have to keep airflow present. So you have to use a little bit of intuition. I'm being so cautious when I'm taking these logs up because I'm making sure there's no like bugs or anything in there because that has happened before and they scare the crap out of me sometimes. So this is going to be the final layer of the uh, wood, I guess. And then I'm going to sprinkle some copper carbonate on top when I'm done for good luck. I don't think it actually does anything, but it couldn't hurt. So here I'm just going ahead and lighting it. And again, the cloth just makes it easier so you don't have to spray a bunch of lighter fluid down there and pray that it actually works before you have to disassemble it and properly build it again. So there's my good luck kiss to the fire, the copper carbonate. And this time lapse was supposed to be cool, but it only lasted 20 seconds and it didn't show what I wanted it to show. So that was kind of a failure. 
Um, you can see the fire just compressing, the wood I mean compressing, which is kind of cool. Laid another log on top there, just for some more fuel. And basically with the firing process, you light the fire and you wait for the smoke to thin out, not be as thick. Then you go ahead and slap the lid on. You wait for the smoke coming out of the chimney to not be so thick. And then you um, seal off the vents on the side with ceramic fiber. And once that smoke becomes less thick and you can see the fire burning through the peepholes on the bottom, you cover those up with magnets or something just to create a reduction atmosphere. So when you open the kiln, it's typically very underwhelming. The pots don't look very good, but the real magic happens when you finally brush the dust off and wash them off. And you can see me picking up this broken piece and being very butthurt and sad. That's okay though. I might try Kintsugi, which is where you fix a cracked pot with gold. I don't know if it'll be worth it or not, but it could be kind of cool. I've never done that before. And these are still hot to the touch, even 26 hours after starting the firing. So I had to grab them with a shirt. And at this point, I'm just washing them off, getting all the ash and uh, loose carbon off. Sanding as needed, because sometimes, like I said, chemical compounds will coagulate onto the pot and leave a nasty scar. But these, for the most part, were pretty good. Um, definitely not my best firing, but it's my first one in a very long time, so I can't be too disappointed, you know? So when I put water on them, that's what they're going to look like when they're sealed with wax. And you have to seal them with wax because these pots are not glazed, they're just raw bisque-fired pottery. So if you want to put water on them, you have to put some kind of sealant in there. And you can't glaze them again because if they go up past like 1500 degrees or so, all of this smoke and carbon will just burn off. And that kind of eliminates the purpose of smoke firing. So I tried to devise some kind of elaborate um, hole closing device, which is just a piece of tape cut into a circle. And it ended up backfiring because it just got caught up top and it left little dribbles of wax on the side. So I had to go through a second coat on that pot and it just kind of was a waste of time. This process is really hard for me because you have to let the top dry before you can pick it up, but you can't leave it in the bottom too long or else the lip is gonna have a ring of wax around it. And here you can see me blowing out the extra wax so it doesn't drip down the side when it's already starting to dry, because then it looks like crap. So there's probably a much better way to do this, but um, brushing leaves really bad brush strokes, and I don't like that. kind of defeats the whole point of pouring it on. Pouring it on is supposed to leave just like no impressions. It's supposed to be smooth, like a calm body of water. But I definitely didn't do the best job I've ever done with this. I tried. And here I am just pouring the uh, wax on the inside to finish them off. Seal them so that they can actually be used for something, maybe. marvelous technique. I was afraid that I was going to spill over the side with this one because the lip is really small, but I did okay. So you can see on the outside, the pots are already sealed and they're dry and uh, they're a little bit shinier than I like. It kind of makes them seem a little bit tacky when they're super shiny like that. I just like to have a little matte finish. Just enough that it reveals the true colors, but it doesn't leave a blinding glow like that. But that's the final result right there. I'm overall pretty happy. But yeah, thanks for watching. Bye bye.